In this video, we're going to talk about negative numbers. Now, what exactly is a negative number? A negative number is simply any number that is less than zero. It has a value lower than zero. And if you think about a number line, here we have zero in the middle. And to the right, we have positive integers, such as 1, 2, 3, and 4. But to the left, we have negative integers like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so forth. And as you travel to the right, the value of the number increases. As you go towards the left, the value of the number, it decreases. And so negative numbers, they contain or they have a lower value than a positive number. For example, we know that 7 is greater than 5 because, you know, 7 is to the right of 5. 5 will be here, 7 will be somewhere over there. But 4 is greater than negative 3. Positive values have, I mean positive numbers have greater values than negative numbers. But let's say if we have negative 6 and negative 9, which one has a greater value? Now the one that is more negative has a lower value. So negative 6 is greater than negative 9. Let's say if you plot negative 6 here, negative 9 will be to the left of negative 6. And so because negative 6 is to the right of negative 9, it has a higher value. Another way in which we can illustrate negative numbers in real life situations is having a bank account. Let's say you decide to walk to the bank and open up an account. And then your first deposit, let's say it's $300. So this will be your account value. Then let's say the next day you decide to go to the ATM and withdraw $500. That's going to be a bad decision. I don't recommend doing that, but in your account, it's going to be negative 200. So what does the negative 200 mean? How can you withdraw more money than what you already had in the account? You only had 300. How can you take out more than what you have? The fact is, you're taking out money that you don't have. You took out 300 of your own money, but you took out 200 of someone else's money, that is the bank's money. Therefore, you owe the bank $200. And this is not a good situation to be in. I mean, I would recommend taking this course of action because they're going to slap you up with some fees and you're not going to like it. And if you have some other, basically, bills coming in that is attached to your account, Every withdrawal or every deduction that you may make beyond this point, you might get hit up with another uh, fee. So you don't want to be in a negative region. It, it's a, basically a bad region to be in. And so it's always better to have no money instead of owing someone uh, money. It's better to be debt free than to be in debt for the borrower is slave to the lender and you don't want to be in that situation. Now, looking at this first one right here. 300. That is a credit. Whenever you add money to your account, you are crediting your account. And so a credit is always, it's reflected by a positive change, a positive change in your account value. Now, when you take out money, it's called a debit. And a debit is always associated with a negative change. So hopefully this little illustration helped you to understand how negative numbers relate to financial matters. So remember, if your account value is positive, this reflects money that you have in your possession. This is money that you own, and that's a good situation. Now, if your account value is negative, this is money that you owe. This is someone else's money that you have to pay back, and so that's a, a bad situation to be in. So positive numbers reflect values above zero, and negative numbers reflect values below zero. Now, another way we can illustrate this concept is elevation. So let's say this is sea level. Let me put some waves. Now, let's say I need a different color. This is the ground level. And here we have a mountain. And then here we have a valley. So at sea level, the elevation is zero. Now let's say at this mountain, the elevation is 1,000 feet. 
Now we would assign a positive value if our reference level is C level. So that's going to be our reference level because we chose that to be an elevation of zero. And so here at the top of the mountain, the elevation is positive because it's above sea level. But at this valley here, the elevation is below sea level. And so we're going to have to give it a negative value. Let's say it's negative 800 feet. So it's 800 feet below uh, sea level. And so elevation can also help you to see the relationships of positive numbers with negative numbers. And so if a number is negative, it simply means that it's below zero. And if a number is positive, it simply means that that particular number is above zero or greater than zero. Now let's talk about multiplication of integers, positive and negative integers. What is 4 times 3? Now you know that 4 times 3 is 12. Now what about 4 times or negative 4 times 3? How do we know that a negative number times a positive number will give us a negative result. 4 times 3 is 12, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. But why is that the case? Well, we can see why 4 times 3 is 12, because if you add 4 3 times, it will give you 12. And we could also see why negative 4 times 3 is 12, because if we add negative 4 3 times, well, this will give us negative 12. And so that makes sense. But what about negative 4 times negative 3? A negative times a negative is a positive. But it's going to be rather difficult to illustrate that using uh, these concepts. But why is that? Well, first, before we go into the why questions, because those questions are usually the deeper ones, why this, why that, let's talk about the signs. We know that a positive number times a positive number will give you a positive number. And a positive number times a negative number will give you a negative number. But a negative times a negative will give you a positive. But, but why is that? Why is a negative times a negative equal to a positive number? Disclaimer, you really don't need to know why. If you simply know that a negative times a negative equals a positive number, you can pass all of your math classes. So if you're here studying for a homework or something, you really don't need to know why. But for those of you who are just curious and want to know the answer, here's what I have for you. So one way you can think about it is using math. Let's say if we add negative 4 plus 4. What's the result? Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Now, let's say if we take negative 3 and multiply by 0, what will we get? A number, any number times 0 will always be 0. So any finite number like 3 or negative 3 or 5 or 8 times 0 will be 0. Now let's take this, which equals 0, and let's replace the 0 by it. So what is negative 3 times negative 4 plus 4? Well, we know that negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Times negative 3, this has to equal 0 in order for math to make sense. Now, let's distribute. Negative 3 times negative 4. Is that negative 12 or positive 12? Well, let's get back to that later. Let's multiply negative 3 times 4. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. In order for this to add up to 0, negative 3 times negative 4 has to be positive 12. Otherwise, it, don't, it won't work. Positive 12 plus negative 12 adds up to 0. And so, by that reasoning, it makes sense that a negative number times a negative number equals a positive number, mathematically speaking. Now, is there a real-life situation in which we can illustrate the concept of multiplying two negative numbers and getting a positive result? Well, sometimes the best way to illustrate numbers is by using money, because that's like something that many of us are familiar with. So let's say that a person owes $400. It could be $400 on a credit card or something. And let's say in her bank account, they have 1000 And so let's say they put $1,000 in. And so that's a credit, which means that's a positive value. Owing money, that's basically like a debit, because 
it's going to come out of your account one way or the other. And so that's a, a negative value. So in terms of your net worth at this point, or basically your net financial value, you have positive 1000 due to the cash that's in your account and negative 400 due to the money you owe. So your net financial value is going to be positive 600. And that makes sense, right? Now, how can we use this information to illustrate that a negative times a negative is a positive number? And it's something called the subtraction of debt. Because subtraction has to do with a negative sign, and debt is another negative number. So combining these two, let's see what's going to happen to the value of your net worth. Will it go up or will it go down if you subtract a negative quantity, if you subtract a debt? So let's decrease the debt by paying some of it off. So we're going to throw $300 at that credit card. So by paying it down by 300, instead of owing 400, we're going to owe 100. So keep that in mind. I want to write that somewhere. So we paid 300 into the credit card or into what we owe. So what's going to happen? So we started with a debt of 400. And keep in mind, debts are negative quantities. And we're going to subtract. So subtraction, that's a negative sign. We're going to subtract the debt by 300. And a debt is a negative quantity. So we have another negative sign because we're dealing with debt. So what's the result? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this is going to be negative 400 plus 300, and that's going to give us negative 100, which reflects the new debt that we owe. And so that's another way in which you could illustrate the concept of multiplying two negative numbers and getting a positive result. Now let's see what happens to our account value. So Originally, we had $1,000 in the account, and now, so that's a positive value, and now our new debt is 100, and so that's a negative value. So 100 plus negative, I mean, 1,000 plus negative 100 is $900. So by subtracting debt, the account value increased from 600 to 900. So we've experienced a positive change in the account value by 300. And so subtracting debt, multiplying a negative by a negative, will give us a positive result. And so if you look at our previous account value, it was 600. And then we subtract our debt by negative 300. And so a negative times a negative will give us a positive value. So we have 600 plus 300, and that will give us 900. And so that's how you can illustrate that a negative times a negative will give you a positive result by using the subtraction of debt um, as an illustration. So that's all I got for uh, this video. Hopefully it helped you to understand the concept of negative numbers and multiplying uh, negative numbers as a result. Thanks for watching. Actually, before I end this video, there is another concept that can illustrate why a negative times a negative is a positive number. So let's say if a positive number represent you moving to the right, moving in the forward direction. When you multiply a positive number by a negative number, think of it as being a reversal. You're reversing direction. So thus, you're going to get a negative result, which means that you're going to the left. Now, let's say if you multiply a negative number by a negative number. How can we illustrate that as being positive? Well, starting with this one, which we're going to the left, if we do another reversal, that's going to take us to the other direction, to the right, and that is in a positive direction. So if you have something going to the left, and then you reverse it again, it's going to go to the right. So let's say, for example, if we have a number line. Let's say this is 0. And let's say we want to walk positive 3 steps to the right. So that would be a positive result, going towards the right. Now, let's say if you want to walk negative four steps to the left. 
that will take us to negative 4. But now, starting from 0, let's say we want to go negative, negative 3. So the first negative means that we want to go to the left. However, the second negative tells us that we need to reverse our direction. So we end up going three steps to the right, which means that the end result is a positive result. And so you can also use the change of direction to illustrate the concept of multiplying a negative number times a negative number. It's like a double reverse. And so if you reverse and then reverse again, you're going to be going in the original direction. So if you're going towards the right and then you reverse and then reverse again, you're going to go towards the right again. So a double reversal will give you basically a, a positive value, so to speak.